Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we are back to discussing overall just not only terrible pickup artist advice, but also just terrible behavior generally, terrible preconceived notions, terrible stereotypes. So in all, this video is just terrible. So if that's what you wanna put yourself through, you came to the right place. After all, I am your disappointment dealer, so I always wanna give you the worst of the worst I can find online. Before we get into this video, as you know, content like this is often demonetized, so I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is America's favorite adult store. Not only does it come with discreet packaging, but they also donate 20% of their profit to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. They also have a 24-7 customer service and have 90-day no-hassle returns. If you go to adamandeve.com and use code GLARE, you'll get 50% off one item and free shipping in the US and Canada. Thank you, Adam and Eve, for sponsoring this video. So, remember how I talked about that one pickup artist website? Well, the last time I made a video about that, I noticed a very interesting title. Don't date women on pills or with issues. I don't know how you're gonna find any woman who has no issues, any human for that matter with no issues like I don't know of any that exist but if you want to search for that and just die alone that's your prerogative the pills part I thought was interesting also because I was like is this referring to drug addiction is this referring to just medication that's prescribed like what 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 does on pills even mean I know I don't really have to preface this because you guys know but just in case date or don't date whoever you want. I just think it's stupid to try to tell other people who to date. Like writing a whole article on who not to date. Why can't you just write an article about who to date? Or what attributes to look for in a partner? Like at least have a positive spin on it rather than just an article essentially just shitting on women who we'll get into it. In 2019, psychological horror movie Midsummer, a girl with psychological problems accompanies her boyfriend and his pals to a weird cult festival in Sweden. The movie itself is bizarre and it's pure fiction and rather extremely so. The director dreamed up a death cult more depraved than the ancient Aztecs or Assyrians and placed it in modern hippie Sweden. However, there's one moral present in the movie I think is worth a highlight. Don't date women on pills or women with severe psychological issues for that matter. Do you see where I'm going to potentially implode? Ah, a message of hope, right on time. Everything is garbage. First of all, Starting with the Midsummer comparison just irks me because with a lot of these pickup artists, whether the pickup artist or dating coach is a woman or a man, the thing that I see quite often is that women who are doing the exact same thing as men, like for example in Midsummer, she's not the only one who's tripping on drugs, let's be clear, the main character that is, but she's the one who is demonized for it and everyone else is just like, what, they're good because they're guys and so like, they're different. I'm not gonna get started, but I think you know where that's going. The part of like women with severe psychological issues, frankly, I think, like I said, date who you want. If you don't think you'd be a good match for someone who has mental health issues, it's your prerogative to not date them. But again, I don't think it's useful or even accurate to just say, oh yeah, every person that has a severe mental illness or mental illness or is on medication for that fact is automatically just like this disaster of a person. And I just find that so belittling because that's a detail of who they are, sure, but they're not just like a walking billboard that says mental illness. In the same year that movie premiered, 2019, 23.7 of Americans was, were, on a psychiatric drug. That includes things like antidepressants, antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, and a host of other assorted brain-altering cocktails. These pills have all kinds of effect on the brain of those who use them. That's kind of the point of medication. The numbers are slightly higher for older adults, but not for much. 18 to 44 year olds make up 36.5 of the American population and 33.8% of the American pill using population. The sex differences are stark. Women are 67% more likely to use psychiatric drugs than men are. If you go out enough and meet enough women, you're going to meet a lot of women on pills. What should you do with these women? Should you treat them as normal or should you treat them the same way their psychologist 
does as people have something wrong with them and stay away. Mamma, ti posso richiamare solo tra dieci minuti che sto filmando? Listen, if we want to have a conversation about Big Pharma in America, that is a conversation we can have. That being said, here I feel like individuals are being targeted, individuals that have mental illness are being targeted and judged as opposed to pharmaceutical companies that like to capitalize on making people feel worse instead of better, so then they have a pill to give them to make them magically feel better. I have theories, I have conspiracies, there's a lot I could say. But here, that's not what they're referring to in the least. This is just pretty much saying women are mentally ill, a lot of women are mentally ill, and therefore don't date them because that automatically means something more than just you have mental illness, which is antiquated. Why people take psychiatric medication? Oh my god, this is gonna be terrible, I already know it. What do you mean why do people take psychiatric medication? The fact that we even have to discuss why people take psychiatric medication, first of all, if the chemicals in your brain are not functioning the way they need to function, you need something to adjust that. Aside from that, certain mental illnesses make life unlivable without medication or they make it impossible for someone to take care of themselves. There are plenty of reasons why you would take it. Much like if you have iron deficiency, why would you take iron supplements? Because you have a deficiency and you're just evening things out. I don't understand like what's so complicated to understand about this. The first girl I ever picked up from a nightclub was on antipsychotics. Oh, here we go. Or she had been sometime before she met me. As we lay in bed after the deed, she began to tell me about various unearthly things she was witnessing and how glad she was I saw them too. I had no idea what she was talking about. However, I chose to just stay quiet about that. She then confessed that her adoptive father, a psychologist, had her on various medications. She was convinced he used these medications to control her and that she actually did not need them. She then whispered that she had stopped taking them and felt so much better. Needless to say, I did not see her again. But what an introduction to nightclub pickup. Fortunately, the vast majority of the women I've met and romance since then have been sane. That early encounter left an impression though. I'm gonna just say this and move on. If you're here writing a whole ass blog that is pretty misogynistic with antiquated ideas, but you're gonna judge someone for taking medication, if you can't see the irony there, most women on psychiatric drugs take them for depression, anxiety, or to regulate their moods. But why do we need these now in such an oppressive abundance when we never had to rely on pills to medicate ourselves into normalcy before? One common argument for why here we all need drugs are that humans have never lived in cities like we do now before. And that is the reason why we need these pills, to help people adjust in the strange, unnatural new environment we're all in. Or there's the other explanation that back in the day, if you admitted to having mental health problems, you might have electroshock therapy, they might give you a lobotomy. So people were just quiet about their problems and either just lived in misery or worse, ended up killing themselves. So a lot of these problems, in my opinion, are not new. We're just talking about them now. That's, that's all it is. So then he goes on about how humans have lived in cities and blah, blah, blah. Not very interesting. I'll link it down below because this is like aside from the issue. And frankly, I don't really want to hear someone who has no degree in the medical field go on and on about their conspiracy about why women take pills. So let's get to the center point of this. Pills or other mental issues are a big red flag. I browse Reddit sometimes on breaks, both for entertainment as well as to keep a pulse on what the segment of society that, that frequents Reddit thinks, feels, and believes. One of the ironies I see on there is Reddit users' love of claiming everything is a red flag in a romantic partner. Yet at the same time, these same users will claim that anyone saying anything against therapists or pills is off his rocker. There's nothing wrong with critiquing, like I said, the big pharma industry, certain types of therapies, certain types of therapists. That's fine, but it is a case-by-case -case situation, first of all. And second of all, you're just making sweeping generalizations. That's why it's stupid and people don't like it because it would be the equivalent of me saying, as an example, this isn't a fact. There's a higher percentage of men who are domestic abusers, so don't ever speak to any man because he might be a domestic abuser. And it's like, that's unhinged. Reddit is filled with depressed people on pills, going to therapists who then go online, waving their fingers around, pointing at everything other than themselves as red flags. Oh, how unaware of the irony they are. I think it's a red flag for someone to write and dedicate an entire blog on how to get women, but clearly has no basic understanding of what humans are like. I really don't think you should use pills for psychological issues if it can at all be helped. To keep the record straight, I experienced a decade of deep depression, despair, and social isolation during my teens and 20s. I tried to end my life at one point, my grades slipped, I nearly dropped out of school, and I'd been at the top of the, my class for most of my academic career. I really struggled with it. Eventually, after a decade that felt like a millennium, time passes no slower than when you're isolated and in despair, I got out of it. I talk about how and the steps to follow in my article on the subject.
She's also telling you there are two hers. The her you know, i.e. the one on pills, and another her you've never met, i.e. the one you will meet if she ever goes off pills. Sounds fake, but okay. And she's telling you she's not someone with fortitude enough to beat her own issues on her own. She turns to others to medicate her and may well be under others' thumbs, i.e. care, guidance, and direction for a very long time or forever. The irony is an article about pills makes me want to have a mental breakdown. Imagine trying to patronize someone for going to see a doctor to help solve the issues that they're having. Would you tell someone with a physical illness that they're not, they don't have the fortitude enough to take care of themselves, so they're under the care of a doctor and that makes them weak? Do you, do you hear how stupid you sound? Like, just say that to yourself and tell me it sounds like a smart argument, that someone's weak because they went to see a doctor. To me, on the contrary, that shows that you're trying to find answers and you're trying to better yourself and find solutions to your issues. Like, I don't really see what <laughs> what is so bad about that. But again, I guess they have to wait 10 years and hope that they get better. Now, as a man, you're going to have a natural sort of temptation to protect and take care of weak women who are in distress. This is an inbuilt part of the male psyche. This drive and desire to shelter weak, fearful, wounded women and receive sex and devotion in return. I... I've, I've met fucking had it. This, oh my god. Weak women. So when did taking medication for the issues you have turn into you being weak? And also, what's the take on men on pills? Are they okay or are they also weak men that lack fortitude? I've discussed this instinct in detail in my article on White Knights, Superman Syndrome, and Damsels in Distress. In that same article, I discussed why you very much want to avoid this trap. Hint, these damsels will ruin your life with their problems and drama. As a man studying the social arts, you're not limited to taking what you can get with women the way most men are. If a woman has big red flags, you do not need to be the one to self-sacrifice and care for her, nor should you even get involved in the first place. I'm gonna stop here because truly my brain is frying reading all of this. With one thing I do agree, it is not your job when you date someone or are in a relationship or even a friendship, it is not your job to fix anyone. It is not your job to be the martyr. I 100% agree with that because you have to have your own life. You can help people, you can support people, but you can't fix them, and I agree with that. But I also don't think that anyone with mental illness is just waiting for you to swoop in and fix all of their problems and, you know, just be this big savior and sacrifice your own life for them and their well-being. Like, I just think this, this sounds like an article about a very specific woman. You know when people write articles and it's not really relatable and doesn't really seem relevant to anything, but you can imagine that there was one woman on pill that like did something to this guy and now this is what he's like because this is not a reflection of reality in my opinion. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. Let's get right into the fan art.